everyone, it's Steph here. Welcome back to Scott Trans. Uh, sorry I haven't done videos for the last two weeks, uh, two Tuesdays. The first one I was at the dental hospital and I had to go and it was Monday. And the second one I was in Newcastle, so for a holiday. It was alright, yeah, we had a good time. Um, yeah, so today's theme is summer, so I thought I would show you my summer makeup routine and showing you how to feminise the face and all that and the skin care and I'll talk about shaving and contouring and b covering beard shadow and the rest so uh, if you like it keep watching subscribe to the channel uh, please and watch all the other people on the channel they're amazing and um, yeah um, keep keep watching so happy pride month everyone it's uh, pride in Edinburgh this month I still haven't heard back from the gender uh, the, the the place in Brighton that does the the male to female um, genital surgery I haven't heard about that at all so I'm going to ring them on Wednesday because tomorrow I'm doing my radio show check it out it's um, 4 to 5 samradio.org uh, uh, Sam is in the name and it's really good uh, I'll be doing a K-pop thing tomorrow I was so gutted I couldn't get BTS tickets because uh, people were buying them to tout them but I think they're slowly going back in the system, the touted ones. Anyway, so I think skincare is really important when you're doing your makeup routine and keeping your skin looking young. So I'll start off with my simple kind of skin purifying cleansing lotion. You don't need much of this on. So when it comes to the bit where I do my beard cover, I will also demonstrate how to shave properly and I'll tell you what products you should use in order to shave. They're not expensive. The razor is a bit expensive, but it's not anything like hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It's about, I would say it's about 15 quid for the razor and then every time you buy the heads, well I use the heads about two or three times and then... Um, I just use cheap ones for downstairs and all that because that doesn't matter if it's slightly stubbly but this does so I will tell you about that anyway so I'm now going on to my uh, simple cleanser kind to skin soothing facial toner 100% alcohol free I like simple because even though I've not got sensitive skin on my face I think you should always use sensitive skin products because they're going to have less harsh chemicals in them well that's my idea I try to go for things that are more natural but um, it's quite expensive to always go for natural which is a shame because it is a shame if I keep ducking my head and going down it's because my products are on the bunker and I'm, uh, the camera's not, not next to it so I'm having to I'm using my simple kind of skin replenishing rich moisturiser 24 hour but before I use this actually this is the most important step to keep your skin looking younger you can have as many wrinkles in your face and think uh, anti-wrinkle cream will solve that nine times out of ten anti-wrinkle cream won't get rid of wrinkles it will it will just mask them and uh, the only way to get rid of it is, is harsh surgeries and down the line and really sun protection is the best thing anti-aging thing you can use on your face so for me because I put makeup on, I use a facial one just on the face. If it's really hot in the sun, obviously I'd put more on if I was abroad. Now, the factors don't mean 30 is not less than 50. It just means that you can wear it for longer. So if it says 50 on it, it means it's 50 times longer than than uh, than, than uh, nothing, if you see what I mean. So this is... Uh, uh, Sultan Once 8 hour sun cream I put it on under my um, uh, moisturiser because uh, you need about a teaspoon size of it I'm not putting much on today because it's the evening and, uh, and I'm going out uh, going out for a bit shopping and then I'm going for coffee or something so that's just so I've just put that on because in the evening if I'm going no I'm going out I don't put much and even when it's not sunny you need to put this on because the sun can be most damaging when it's not even there in the wind it can damage you quite hard and 
it helps to protect from aging. I'm 31 and I've been using sun cream every day since I was about 15, 16. It really has made a big difference in my skin. So now I'm going in with that simple kind of skin replenishing moisturiser. You may think this is a lot of creams to put on your face and if you feel it's too much for your skin don't do it but for me I find it helps a lot and it keeps my skin in tip top condition and it's really good. It stops my skin from flaring up, it stops my skin from going wrinkly, it stops my skin from pouring, having pores in it and it's just good for me, it works well for me. So next I'm going in with this Nivea After Shave Post Center Shape Up. Even if you've had laser hair removal this is worth investing because this product here, Nikki Tutorials, which is a big makeup person on YouTube, has proven that this actually works to act as a primer and uh, it because it has heavy amounts of glycerin in it. I like it because it stops the stinginess on my skin, but there's a lot of aftershaves that you use that are quite like, you put them on the face and you're like, ah, kind of feeling. This is more like, kind of like soothing almost. So I'll start off with the beard area first. And then I go all the way up the face. So I let that dry in a bit, and I'm going into my pr proper primer now. So today I'll be using the if I can find it. So I found it was still in my bedroom. So I'm using the Max Factor Face Infinity All Day Primer. Now, if your makeup items say they have SPF in them, it is SPF, yes, but it's not going to protect your skin because you need to put a heck of a lot on and cake it on in order for it to actually be the same as having enough sun cream on to cover your face so it's actually not giving you any SPF protection much at all maybe if it was maybe if it was like you were going out in the sun for like a minute that would probably be it uh, priming your face is really important because priming your face helps to make your makeup go on better, it helps it to stay on longer and it helps it the longevity of it and if you're a trans woman like me you will know how much you need your makeup to stay on or you want it to stay on so I'm using Max Factor Face Infinity All Day Primer it's got SPF 20 but I never if it says SPF 20 in it I just uh, don't listen to the SPF on a makeup item I, I'll, I use it like as in kind of like a, a sun cream anyway So then I go in with my eye primer. Now you don't always have to use an eye primer. Uh, I'm using one today, but I'm using um, the eyeshadow primer by Primark. It's quite a good one. It comes out like a kind of foundation color, which I find a bit weird, but Primark, if you really, if you're on a budget and you really want some great products, Primark has a great selection of makeup items there. Stuff is really good. I'm a member of some beauty groups on Facebook. One of them's called, um, Beauty and Banter Chat, the other one's called Nails and Makeup with the Family, the other one's called The Chatter Ship. They're really good, they're just really good groups uh, to be in. Um, they're just great. So, now that I've done that, I'm going in with this special eye cream. Now this is by Kiko Milano. Kiko Milano. It's a makeup brand. It's not too expensive, it's actually a drugstore. Well, it's I would say it's kind of like, it's drugstore prices but high end, if that makes sense, they're like, they're not cheap products but they always have sales on so it feels like drugstore prices. Uh, this stuff's amazing because I suffer from really, I've got crow's feet in my, in my eyes and they're not very visible but when I put makeup on it seems to accentuate them really badly to the point where it looks like I've aged. So this stuff, what it does is, is it blur, it it puts, it, it sits on your eye, but it acts as like a barrier to anything sitting in your lines, so it's really good. If you've got eye wrinkles like me, don't bake, and that's basically when you put powder under the eye, don't bake. If you've not got them, lucky bitch, go ahead and do it then, just do it, it's 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 great. So I'm going to have to get my little mirror, I'm using my little, um, uh, found my little um, mirror, because I can't see in the big mirror. And then you want to dab it on. So you want to take a big dab of it 
And then because this area is quite delicate, you want to use your ring finger just to tap it in. This stuff is really good. Now I'll be linking, uh, I'll be linking most of the products uh, down below in the description bar. So don't worry if you miss any of them. This is the Kiko Milan Free Salt Blurring Eye Balm. It's just really good. The lady in Kiko Milan here in Edinburgh was fantastic. It's right next to Primark. She she knew I was trans. I told her, and she was just like. This will work for you, this will work for you, this will work for you. And I was saying, what about this, what about this? She's like, it's rubbish, it's rubbish. And she was being really honest. Which most shops would just say to you, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, even though you don't want it. So for today's makeup, I quite like this kind of like, um, orangey kind of colour. Now I'm using my, uh, this, is a, this is an expensive brand, so if you haven't got the money, you can buy whatever from wherever, but I like this brand because it just is very, well, it, I, I, I got this when it was on offer and I had money on my uh, Debenhams card. It's the uh, Too Faced Totally Cute palette. I'll be using this Bunny Fufu orangey colour uh, just all over the eyelid. Tap any excess off. It's so dirty, I've had it for so long, the mirror was dirty in it and I couldn't see through it. If you want this to go on a bit more intense, uh, wet your brush or wet your finger if you're using your finger. Sometimes I think using eye shadow with your finger, people say, ooh, you should use brushes. I think it goes on a lot nicer. If you heard a strange meowing, it's just my cat. Because he's getting picked up by my boyfriend because he's having a cuddle. Because he whines like that and then as soon as he's been picked up he's totally fine. So this is a nice burnt orange kind of colour and it just reminds me of the sun and uh, being gleaming down on you and making you feel happy. Because summer's the, my favourite time of the year. Not because it's my birthday but because it's nice and hot and there's loads of things to do and it's just I feel like I want to stay out longer because it's it's light and I like light I don't like dark not that I've got a phobia of the dark or anything but I just don't like it so as you can see I've left a space here and here you'll see why that's to put highlighter on to open up the eye at the end but you'll see and then if you want to do what I've done what I do sometimes is put orange under the eye but I'm not doing that today just for quickness for this video and because uh, I'm not really going anywhere special, so I'm just doing it like that. Um, so I'm going to use a Primark eyeliner pencil, a black one. Now actually, this is a good trick. You could put on your waterline, you could put white. So your waterline is this bit in here. And don't worry if you're not, if you're new to makeup and you've never done that. Don't worry if you start, if it starts... You start crying little tears out, tear ducts out, that's normal. It, it was for me the first time somebody did it on me, I was like, oh, oh my eye, my eye. Because it's not good, but you want it. This is how I do it, I go like this, just in with a pencil. And then because I've got green eyes and black really goes with green eyes, I do the tight line, which is the inner eye bit. Sorry, I just got some in my eye. No, it's hair. It gets in the way, this hair. And then, this is going to be really difficult doing this one-handed, so I might have to do it off camera. But if you hold your eye like that and then draw along the line, I don't do a winged eye line. I find that too complicated. There is things called vamp stamp, which is a thing that you stamp on, but it didn't work for me and it was crap. So uh, I'm just going to do this off camera. And remember to make this outer corner uh, dark, fill it in. I would usually use eyeshadow for that, but today I'm just using this. Actually, this is, uh, yeah, a primer eyeliner. I think that if you're going to go cheap on any product, I think eyeliner you can go cheap on, because eyeliner is eyeliner. It doesn't matter if it's $100, 100 quid, 
five quid a pound from the pound shop work really well as well I've used them before but I wouldn't use for found I think the one thing that you have to you can't go cheap on is foundation because a good quality foundation costs money but eyeshadow you can get now really cheap powders as well so I'm going in with my mascara today I usually curl my lashes uh, which I will do for the purpose of this camera actually this film uh, so you want to get your eyelashes and go this helps to make your eyelashes longer and fuller now I don't put false lashes on unless I'm going on a night out or sometimes I do but it takes me a long time to do them and I just can't be bothered doing it so I tend not to do it but if you know how to put them on you want to put them on and I just find that some people can look a bit some some trans ladies can look a bit drag if they put too much around their f eye and their face and your eye is supposed to like opening up your eye is more feminine so using false lashes especially these heavy thick ones are closing your eyes I'm not saying that everyone that that puts eyelashes on looks draggy I'm just saying in general I find it to be less feminine if you want to use those natural ones I would suggest that the ones that you get Cheryl Cole um, allure ones from Superdrug that I like called First Dates they're quite good or the next number up but I wouldn't go any more than that because I've done it before and it just looked clowny and I had to take them off so anyway I'm going in with my mascara if I can find it it says Brilliant L'Oreal Fiber Lash Extreme Resist so it's got two ends and the reason it's got two ends is because one of them is to uh, I think is to um, is to make the lashes more volumized which is number one and then the second bit is to lengthen them now when you're buying mascaras you can't get any that lengthen and volumize at the same time and when you're a trans lady like me a lot of the time our eyelashes are not as long as a cis woman so we kind of need it so this is a great product um, it really works really well and I just do it on the top lashes just now and then I go in with the the number two side, the the numbered one and two. So if you if you're ever confused, you'll know, and you'll know which one's number two because it's the thicker one, and the skinny one's number one. Um, so I think the first number actually volumized lengthens and the second number volumizes sorry um, I've just realized from using it so it's quite a good product uh, I really like this I know I try to go as cruelty free as much as possible with my makeup but it's not always easy but L'Oreal for a long time were not cruelty free but from what I know now they are so it's good because we shouldn't be testing on animals for makeup I understand we need to test them for stuff like NHS and stuff so so anyway, going back to the theme of summer, summer's going to be a big big time for me this year. It's a nerve-wracking time as well because I'm getting lower surgery, which is quite a daunting and scary experience. But I feel like if you don't have any fear about what you're going to be having, I feel like you should be concerned because you should be feeling a bit scared of what you're about to go through and whether it'll go right or wrong. And it shows that you're committed to having it and it just is great. But now, anyway, I'm going on to my bottom lashes. Also, I will be, if I'm not in the op, which I probably won't be because it won't be in the next two weeks, uh, I'll be going to Pride. And hopefully, uh, like last year, no, last year I couldn't go because I had the consultation for the op. So it's been a year since, wow, well, uh, the year before that, they have a lorry, they call it a float, but to me it's a lorry. And... The Transgender Alliance here in Scotland uh, put a thing on Facebook and the first people to comment get a space on it and you go along with music and you dance on it. It's really good fun actually. They do that at Glasgow Pride as well. Edinburgh Pride is great uh, for walking because it's not too far but Glasgow Pride is a really long walk and I didn't want to do that especially with swollen legs. Didn't want to do that and also they have a disabled bus so if you're disabled I think you just get on it and it goes at the back of the bus it's over and done with what can you do so now we will be going on to so uh, I learnt this from a good youtuber um, he's called I can't remember his name Wayne Goss that's it uh, putting powder on before you make up 
before your facial makeup and after your primer is really good to help your makeup go on better and it's really good. So it's number seven translucent perfectly light powder. Now I like this because some powders you put on your face look very cakey and I don't understand all these Instagrammers getting this like little puffy thing and going and really slapping it on. It makes them look really awfully white and it makes them also it sets into all the wrinkles and all the imperfections and then actually blows up their imperfections. A lot of them do it because obviously it's going to keep your makeup on for longer but it's going to make you look all your imperfections show up and everything so it's not too good. Actually before I go on to this I forgot one step. Uh, I'm going to be using this, this is like a red eliminator so this helps when I'm about to, when I'm doing my beard uh, area this helps to relieve the redness from what I'm going to use. So this is Skin Tone Face Base and it's like a greeny cream. And it's also good if you've got like a lot of redness on your skin. So I take a dollop on the back of my hand. And then, sorry anybody in advance, this is going to be a long video because it does take a while to, to do uh, my makeup. But uh, I don't do this every single day because I don't go out every day. But I mean... Uh, and some days I just put a bit of eyeliner on and a bit of and a bit of uh, foundation and beard cover and powder and that's it. Uh, or I don't even do my eyes some day. I have gone out. Or I have even gone out like this with no makeup on and just a pair of jeans and a t-shirt to Tesco and it's been alright. So anyway, you want to put a bit more on. You want to go down to the... This is a really nice cream as well. It's kind of nice and cooling and this hot summer weather it's just lately it's been so warm that I've been feeling weird I don't deal with the heat very well because I don't think my hormone levels are quite right because they're always up and down up and down up and down and I get extreme hot flushes and it's just awful it's like if you think you've experienced a hot flush wait till you start HRT or you're in you're a cis woman in menopause then you'll know what bloody hot flush is So as you can see, that's eliminated a lot of the redness. So that stuff is called, it's by Kiko again, Skin Tone Face Base Kiko. That's a good product. So now I'm going on with that number seven powder. Uh, any, I, I actually don't think that expensive brushes are any better than cheap ones. I actually do think, though, that the Real Technique brushes are really good. And uh, remember to wash your brushes every every uh, week or week and a half. And what you want to do when you're washing them is you want to... You don't have to buy expensive brush cleaners. You can just use plain washing up liquid and put it in cold water this way. Put the washing up liquid in your hand, swish it round and round. And then uh, rinse it out like this and leave it to dry standing that way. Because if you do it that way... The water will go all the way down here and it will break the fibres off and then you'll have no makeup brush. It won't do that straight away but over time it will. I usually put um, powder over my eye but I forgot to do that earlier and, it, uh, and I've already put primer on anyway. So You can use concealer as a primer for your eyeshadow actually which I have done many times which is really good. So now we're going on to the beard cover beard shadow cover so when you're thinking of the, the the beard area it's not black dark light whatever whatever it's the undertones in your beard so mine are bluey green so if you imagine the color wheel go and look it up online orange is here I think or somewhere like that and then um, blue is opposite so I have bluey greeny undertones so I use something that's in between the two colors up here opposite and it comes to this orangey colour and this kind of... Now, you can use Ben Nye 50 Sharp, which is a product you can get online, or you can use uh, a concealer palette, or you can use a plain lipstick. Now, I use Max Factor um, Pink Brandy Lipstick with a NYX NYX orange paint thing I know it's full coverage concealer so it's really good and then once you've put that on you need to use a pan stick that's one shade darker than your natural skin tone 
So for me it's Novio Beige and it's the Max Factor, it's the only one I can find. But if you're blonde or you're only got a little bit of hair because you've had laser hair removal or you're ginger or then you may just get away with using this. But because I've got dark hair I have to do all this which is kind of a bit of a pain at times but hey ho. I, everyone keeps asking why have you not had laser hair removal? I cannot handle the pain, the pain is so bad that I literally feel it for days with my Asperger's so it's not good for me to have that pain. Right, so I'll be using this next. So what I tend to do is, I tend to uh, take, this stuff is very heavy fuel coverage and you don't need much of it and it's a really good stuff. Uh, they do next now in uh, Boots and uh, I believe that YouTuber Jamie Gerenevi is the Oh, don't get me started on her, she's amazing and she's from Glasgow and I just love her. Um, but I think she's gone a bit bit too far with the lip plumping injections, but hey ho, loads of people have done that. Now if you want to look for makeup tips Look at drag queens and just do what they're doing, but more subtle. And also look up other trans people online. This is where I learned. YouTube has helped me so much with makeup skills. I mean, I was already wearing makeup quite a lot anyway, because I was, I was out as a gay man and I was living in my life as a supposedly gay man, even though there's a woman inside. And so. I don't put too much of this on because I'm going to put the lipstick on after it, so... Sorry, I'm feeling a bit dizzy because I woke up with bad vertigo today, but I'll be fine. But hey -ho. So the, the Max Factor lipstick, you're going to use it. You're just going to go... And then what I do is I get a brush so I don't even think this is meant to be used for the beard bit, but I don't care, and I just go. Now some people say putting foundation over this helps. I find it's still very orange and kind of annoying, so I find that pan stick does the trick. What I will say is, is um, I'm going to put some of this green stuff on just to eliminate the orange. It doesn't eliminate it to the point where it rubs it off. It just goes over it and like sort of turns your skin, turns it more neutral, which is what you kind of want. But I have got an issue with this product. Sometimes it can remove some of the beard cover. So after I've done all my makeup, I kind of have to take it off. I have to put a bit more on, just a teeny weeny bit, but it looks more natural if I do this. When I look up to look at the beard area, I'm getting a bit sicky and dizzy. I don't know why I've been getting this. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about shaving, wasn't I? Well, I'll do it after I've put the beard, uh, done the beard area. So that's really good. So it hasn't cancelled the orange completely, but it's died it down to a level. Then what you want to do is you want to take this pan stick. So it's like a roll. It looks more like a lipstick to me. Anyway, we'll take this and we'll just go all the way over that orange that we've used. You can get Max Factor in... Superdrug, Boots, larger Tesco's. Uh, I think you can get it in. I think you can get it now in Sainsbury's, maybe Asda. So anyway, I'm going to take this big brush and I'm going to go. I'm just going to. And then I take a towel, just an old small towel or whatever towel you want, or you could even use tissue, but just wipe any excess off and then 
I press it into the corners of my neck. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the shaving. So you need to get an exfoliating face wash with the little scrubby beads in it. Use that all over your face, wash it off and then use tea tree conditioner. Now I use a Bertel balsam and you need to get the Gillette Pro five blade razor, the one with the battery that vibrates and then you put the conditioner on and you shave down like like so. Then you wash it off, then you use the face wash again, wash it off, more conditioner and then you go. That really helps to get every hair. And I can actually shave now without a mirror because I've been doing it for so long. But here is a uh, this is great, this is a two-in-one, this is a foundation and concealer and it's really good. This is by Kiko Milan and it's a full coverage foundation that lasts ages and it's just really good product, I love it. If you saw somebody walking off, that was just my boyfriend. So you want to put it on your face but, but leave out the beard area for now. Because if you put it on there now and then rub, you're going to rub all the way up and it's going to make your face all orange and you don't want orange face. And then I just tend to use my fingers for this because I find it makes the product look more natural and it rubs it in. Uh, another product that's quite good is a damp beauty blender, which is like one of those egg shaped sponge things. Just checking what's going on outside. Oh, it's one of those flashy lorries with the lights going off because. Uh, there's, going to, there's supposed to be thunderstorms here, I don't know. So I put a little dab under the eye because it's important to make the skin all the same colour. So you want to do that. Now beard area. Then we're just going to tap up here because you don't want to rub any of it off. And then you're going to... Then I just take a towel to wipe any excess off like I did with the beard cover. So now to set that... I use uh, some powder just to set that just now because uh, the same powder we used before because it helps. I don't put much on, I just sort of lightly dust it all over just to set it because it helps with the longevity. Now this is a part where we're really feminizing the face so try and put your hair as back as possible. So we're going to contour and highlight and contouring is sculpting your face to make it more in shape with a feminine face and highlighting is to bring out features to make them look bigger and make them look more prominent like a woman or make them look more smooth and straight so this is what we're going to be doing so you want to get a contour stick or contour palette that is one shade two shades darker than your natural well one shade darker than your natural skin tone well, one shade darker than a natural skin tone for your bronzer, is what I mean. Uh, ask for help at the chemist if you don't know. Also, when you're, using a high, when you're using a highlighter, you want to go for almost paper white. Paper white is important. Try to find what I've had. Now, I use three different highlighters. I use this one, the Unicorn Hearts. It's amazing, but the problem is, is it sets into the beard shadow. But it's so amazing that it needs to be used on certain areas. That one is for the beard area. And because it sets into my wrinkles, all of them, I have to use the Kiko Milan one. But you could just use one highlighter stick. So I'm going to start off with my highlighter. That's the contour by Kiko. And I'm just going to... Put it under the eye. And then I'm just going to... Take this finger to dab it. Just 
And then I'm going to take the Unicorn Hearts highlighter. It's lovely. It does. I thought it would come out like this rainbow all at once, but it doesn't. It comes out this nice kind of silvery colour, which is quite pigmented, almost silvery white. Silvery, bluey, icy white. And you want to go down the centre of the nose and then like a fan shape in between the eyebrows and then the corners of the nose and then just here where the cheeks are the cheekbones and then what you want to do is you want to get the other highlighter which I'm going to use which is my one of my favourite and it was my go-to highlighter for ages and it's a cheap brand was the MUA you find it in Superdrug Makeup Academy highlighter and we're just going to use our finger and we're going to go in the cupid's bow then we're going to go like the W zone I like to call it it's not coming off onto my finger and then like a kind of crescent moon shape and then just above the beard area Want a bit more under the eyebrow bone, and we're going to blend all this in in a bit. But we're going to use the contour now, which is the Kiko Milan Creamy Stick Contour. I love this contour; it's amazing. I like stick contours because I feel like you get more accuracy with it, and it doesn't go all over your face and make it more dark. So you want to go along the cheekbones but leave a little gap and then go down like this and go along the jawline and then down here to make the neck skinnier. So we're going to do that on both sides. And it doesn't matter if they're not symmetrical on both sides but try to make it as symmetrical as possible. Then we're going down the side of the nose like this and then a little bit there and then we're going to do the hairline this brings the hairline forward and makes you appear more feminine now I don't always do this because I've got a hair piece in that's quite low down anyway but for the purpose of this film this uh, video I keep calling it film because I keep watching John McLean and John McLean is a youtuber who's I think a gay guy that likes to do look feminine female and does all these things they're not trans but um, he's not trans, but anyway. So then you want to go along the hairline like so. And then you want to do a three shape, but make sure the last slick of the three joins onto the cheek con the jaw, uh, the cheek contour. So now we're going to blend in the contour. I'm using a contour brush by uh, Real Techniques, and I'm just going to... Then I use a finger for this bit. Now I'm going to take a brush like this and just do the highlight. And then take my finger to just blend in that bit of the highlight. Now take my finger to do that bit. So as you can see, that's a more feminine face. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to powder that to set it. Then I'm just going to um, put more of that um, eye cream on, the blurring eye cream, uh, just ready for my uh, concealer. Now 
Now the concealer I've got is quite good actually. I bought um, an Urban Decay one and it was crap. It did not, it showed up my wrinkles. So the next one's not expensive, it's a lot, it's a Maybelline Instant Anti-Aging Eraser thing and it comes like this and you just have to twist it up so it's quite good. All these are drugstore products. But you don't have to go out and buy what I've got, you just have to you do what, just do what I've done and it helps. I tend to just dab a small amount on like this, some people do it in a triangle shape. But I don't find that works well for me. That's really good stuff. And then I'm going to go on to my eyebrows. So I don't have an eyebrow. I don't have an eyebrow pencil, so I just take a brown eyeshadow and I just literally go over it with a makeup brush over my eye and it works that way that's it and then we nearly finished the makeup look and then uh, I was going to do my hair on camera but I've done it for too long so I'll probably just check in with you all when I've done my hair um, I'm going to use that Naked Skin Urban Decay Concealer um, if I can find it uh, just to highlight a bit more and tidy up the brows. I'm actually going to take that makeup brush again and do more eyebrow because there's a bit here that needs filling in. That's it. That's it done on that side and then I'm going in with my Sugar and Spice palette by yeah, what is it again Revolution and I'm going to put some blush on because you need to put blush on because uh, to give dimension to your face otherwise it will look silly don't worry if you put too much on I always do and then I tone it down with some powder See that's a bit caked on now, so I'm just going to use some of this perfectly light number 7 powder to set it anyway and to dye it down. That's just me trying to get more powder to come out. There's not much powder left, I have to get some more and I just go And then what I do is, this is a good thing, this is the best one I've ever tried, I've tried a lot of them, Revolution Sport Fix Finishing Spray and what this does is it locks in your makeup and keeps it on for longer, so you want to Now you don't need to put, I put way too much of that stuff on, I don't know why I do it but I'm not very good at being um, very um, in moderation with things like that so uh, I wouldn't put as much as I put on now I'm going on to my lipstick I'm using the Body Shop Red Lip Liner and the Body Shop Red Matte Liquid Lipstick I wouldn't say these lipsticks are very good but I have a gluten intoler I have a bad gluten problem where if I eat any gluten I get really sick so I can't use lipsticks because it's going into my system that I've got gluten in so you want to line your lips and then use it to fill them in. The good thing about lip liner is it helps the lipstick stay on longer as well.
And don't worry if you make mistakes, you can use a little tiny brush with uh, some of that uh, Max Factor can, or a con any concealer, like a teeny thin brush and that'll keep, that'll uh, m uh, m mop up any mistakes. This doesn't stay on very long, I don't like it, but yeah, oh, it's got to be done. And then you want to take a towel or a tissue to blot it. So that means going. And if you want it to stay on longer, you could put some tissue on your face, uh, like so. And then put powder over the tissue and that keeps on for longer. But I don't know if powders have gluten in, so I can't do that. But this stuff is gluten free and it's amazing. It's called Lip Coat. You just whack a layer of that on. And that's supposedly supposed to help keep your lipstick on. I think it does, but I don't think it's as good as it says it is. But it still works. So that's it. So uh, I'll check back in with you when I've done my hair. So that's me finished. I did the, the hair off camera because it would have took too long for the camera. I dried it and I straightened it. I don't dry and straighten it every day. I usually wear a, a hair cap, uh, uh, a shower cap, sorry, but... Um, it was really dry lately and I needed to wash it and needed to silver it up again because I like having silver hair. So yeah, so thanks for watching. Check out the other subscribe, the other contributors on the channel. Uh, they're the people that do more videos as well. And also uh, check out the links to my other social media and uh, link to products will be in the description. Have a great day everyone. Bye! You've been watching Steph on Scott Trans. Bye!